Hi friends, today we are going to see properties of discrete Fourier transform. So let us see what are the properties of discrete Fourier transform acronym as DFT. So the DFT first property is linearity. Now the linearity property says that if suppose I have two functions x1 of n and x2 of n, I scale this function by constant a and b and also I add them together linearly, then its dft will be a x1 of k plus b x2 of k. So if I have two functions x1 of n and x2 of it and if I scale them by a and b constant and I have an addition sign in between then dft of x1 will be x1 of k, dft of x2 will be x2 of k and the constant to be multiplied by them. That is a linearity property. Second property is periodicity property. If I have x of n which is periodic, when I say x of n is periodic with period n, this can be mathematically written as x of n equals to x of n plus n. That means after the period n, whatever sample comes, it is same as that of x of n. Let us say for example, I have a signal x of n, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and I say this is periodic with period n is equal to 4. So what will be fifth sample? That is, this is 0, 1, 2, 3. Here my n value goes on. So what will be the fifth sample? So fifth sample will be n plus one the sample. That is, it will repeat one again. Okay, that is the fifth sample, or n is equal to four. I am considering this to be the first sample. Hence, I am calling this as a fifth sample. If you consider this as a zero the sample, then this will be a fourth sample. So after the period four, that is four samples, my samples are going to repeat themselves. So, if I put n is equal to 5, then answer will be 2, n is equal to 6, answer will be 3, n is equal to 7, answer will be 4, and n is equal to 8, answer will be 1 again, and this will go on in the negative direction of n's also. So, mathematically, we write a periodic signal as x of n is equal to x of n plus n. Now, suppose if I have such kind of a signal, then if I take such signal ka dft if i take x of n dft then i am to i i will get x of k okay but if i take now a dft of n plus n then x of k will also be k n plus k plus n okay or i can write x of n plus k so if I will say that my x of n is periodic, my x of k will also be periodic. Okay, So I will get x of n plus k. That is a second property which is called as periodic property. Third property is convolution property. Now for convolution property, if I have x of n, whose dft is x of k and I have h of n whose dft is h of k then if I have x of n convolved with h of n its dft will be x of k multiplied by h of k. 
so we say that the convolution in time domain is transformed to multiplication of two signals in frequency domain so we just need to multiply two signals in frequency domain which is as good as or equivalently the same as that of performing a convolution in the time domain so which type of convolution is this is it a periodic convolution that means circular convolution or a linear convolution so this convolution is always a circular convolution because we believe that x of n and h of n is periodic in na nature so this convolution is always a circular convolution that is about the third property so let us see the next property the fourth property which is shifting property now the shifting property can be treated in two domains either i can shift in time or i can shift in frequency if i will shift in time then it is called as time shift property and if i shift in frequency then it is called as frequency shift property so let us call it as 4a which says that time shift property so the time shift property says that if i have x of n let us say if i have x of n and its dft by definition gives me x of k then okay if i shift x of n by l terms i'm shifting the time domain signal by l number then its dft is nothing but multiplying e raised to j 2 pi k l to x of k so i was having a signal called x of n whose dft was x of k now what i do i take this x of n i shift it by l terms then it affects my dft process by just a multiplying factor of e raised to j 2 pi k l okay so we say that we the frequency is scaled the frequency is scaled by the factor e raised to j 2 pi k l if i shift in time now let us say what would be 4b now 4b we says that frequency shift property now again i have if i have x of n signal which its dft gives me x of k then if x of k is shifted so we need to shift x of k so if x of k is shifted by suppose l terms so i am taking my x of n x of k and shifting it by l terms then what it will affect on my x of n because i am getting x of k from x of n so here i am getting x of n x of k from x of n so if i am getting x of k from x of n and i am doing something with x of k then of course it will affect the x of n so now if i see what is the effect of x of n the x of n will get multiplied by e raised to j 2 pi n and l with a minus sign so what happened if i shifted x of k by l units then i get a multiplying factor in x of n which is 2 pi n l with a minus sign note here if i have a minus sign over here then i have put a minus sign over here if i have a minus sign in this shifting i have a positive sign over here so it is reverse so in time shifting the signs are reversed whereas in frequency shifting the times are the signs are the same 
So this is about shifting property. Now let us go ahead and see what is uh, multiplication of two signals in frequency domain. So fifth property is multiplication property. Now the multiplication property says if I have two sequences x1 of n whose dft is x1 of k and I have x2 of n whose dft is again x2 of k then if I multiply x1 of n into x2 of n then its dft corresponds to x1 of k convolved with x2 of k. So what does it mean? It means that if I have a signal multiplication in time domain it reflects as a multiplication or uh, as a convolution of signals in the frequency domain. This convolution is mandatorily a circular convolution because k is a periodic term. Let us go to the sixth property. The sixth property says that time reversal property. Now if x of n its dft is x of k then if I reverse the sequence now remember every time when I say x of n x of n is considered to be a periodic sequence in dft. So I am mirror imaging a signal which is periodic its replication is the same as this. So if I have a signal x of n which is periodic with period n its mirror will be written as x of n minus n. Okay. Then if I perform dft on this signal now then the result that I will get will be x of minus k. Now we know that x of k is also a periodic sequence so I can write x of n minus k. So we say that x of minus n dft is x of n minus k that is nothing but the next property. So if I reverse a time sequence then I am going to get a reversal procedure in frequency domain also. So last property says about complex conjugate property. So what do you mean by complex conjugate property? So again if I have a complex sequence x of n now it is very important that my input sequence itself is a complex number if x of n is complex and its dft is x of k and if I now conjugate that x of n and take its dft then my x of k will also be conjugated and mirrored. So if I am going to conjugate a complex sequence x of n then my x of k will also be conjugated but as also it will be mirrored. So I can also write the same as x of conjugated minus k. So this minus k reflect that it is a reflected or mirror imaged sequence. So the same thing we can write as x of n minus k because we have a periodic sequence. Thank you.